Hi everyone, welcome to the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen. Well, it's just me in the kitchen tonight with John. Hiya John. Hello everyone. <laughs> He's going to participate a bit more tonight. <laughs> I've got him a little bit more organised. So um, quite a lot of you have asked me to go back to basics. So what we thought is beginning of the year, it's a perfect time to just let start back to basics. And when bakers start baking, the first thing that they make is cupcakes. So I thought what we'll do is we'll have a play tonight in the kitchen and make cupcakes. For those of you who don't know me, please say hello. Um, let us know that you're a newbie. Let us know where you are in the world. You know, give us a little shout out. John will shout out. We've got a fantastic audience that will be joining us tonight. The audience is just starting to grow, but there are a great team of people who watch us nearly every week. Most of them watch us every week, Mondays and Thursdays. Those who watch us both, let us know as well. Those who watch us every week on a Monday, let us know. Thursdays, let us know. Let's get giddy. So, um, what I thought we'll do is we'll make some um, cupcakes with the flavoured icing sugar and we'll make some chocolate cupcakes with the co uh, cocoa powder as well. Um, I'm going to make a buttercream. I made one last week. I'm going to quickly make one up. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make basic butterfly cakes. Do you remember you oldies like myself? Uh, when we were all little girls, we used to make butterfly cakes with our grandmas. So let's go back and make some of those because those are what the kiddies like as well. They love it, especially if you make them with your grandchildren or your children. Um, so, John, how is our audience doing? Are they all coming together? Yeah, yeah, we're up to 88 people watching. So hello to everyone. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so what goes on in the Sugar and Crumbs Kitchen stays in the Sugar and Crumbs Kitchen. The cupcakes that I'm baking tonight are not for you, so do not worry. They're not for the general public either. They're either, well, I'm not eating them because I'm on a diet, but they will go out to family and friends and people who know me who are happily happy to take them, okay? So my hands have been washed. I'm not bothered that my hair is down. None of it's going in there. Do not worry, okay? All we're doing is just showing you how to make cupcakes. Um, the other thing is, I am not a professional baker. I am a home baker. I enjoy baking and I started baking about six years ago. Um, I used to bake in my early 20s for my children. I started my family young, I was 18. Money was tight and I had to bake then for them. So as time went on through my 20s, I used to bake and then I stopped baking. And then when I hit my 50s, I started again. And I had to go right back to the beginning. I know it sounds daft, but I really couldn't remember how to make a cupcake. Um, and I've had all the same problems that you have. I've had peeling cupcake cases, I've had them soggy, I've had them sink, I've had them very crispy on the top. Um, and what I will say is, if you have peeling cupcake cases, okay, it's generally your cupcake hasn't been baked enough or it's the way you've set the pan down, okay? So when you brought them out in the oven, so I'll just give you, I don't know whether you can see on this camera. So when you bring them out of the oven, do not drop them like that, okay? Do not bang them. Do not take them out as they come out of the oven and start dumping them on there, okay? They need to go on something that's gonna allow some air to go around them. So these are perfect. We sell these, they're in packs of three, okay? Packs of three and they're called cooling racks. They're absolutely brilliant. You actually stack them on top of each other hard for me to do this while we're here stack them on top of each other and then just sit your cakes in so as you pull them out of the oven sit them in sit them on the top so i've made these fresh in the last hour i think i've just banged that camera were you on there john <laughs> no, so, okay. so i just made these in the last hour i was meant to be all organized today and i said to maria you know what maria 12 o'clock we're getting the kitchen and we'll start baking and be really organized completely forgot i was going to the forget vets completely forgot i had to go somewhere else this afternoon and then i got a ping message off the lady who does my nails at four o'clock telling me at half past three telling me i was in for my nails at four so by the time i got home at half past six the madness has begun but there you go that's life and um, i've cooked three batch, batches of cupcakes in that time so i have done the normal cupcake recipe okay this is just with margarine okay so this is creaming sugar and margarine together and then this one is with oil you'll see that i've overfilled my cupcakes now some of you you would like them are you on this camera john mm -hmm. so some of you will like them so you these come forward a little bit yeah, yeah. Yep. so I've overfilled them. I've used a selection of uh, cupcake cases just for you to see. 
Okay, so these are the paper ones, they're called Blossom. We have them on our website and you'll see that the case is not peeling. When I took these out of the oven today, they've just gone on the cooling tray and this is, the, this is how they came out the oven. I've used foils, so we've got one, two, three. I've used these new Wilton ones. They're a little bit greasy actually, maybe I should have took them out. Um, foils, how many have we got here? And the Blossom ones. So I think that's all I used. Hmm. Maybe the, uh, these ones I should have taken out, but everything else is absolutely fine. But you'll see there is no peelers. Let me just think it out. Think it out, there we go. What I will say is they're probably over, not over baked, over filled the cases. Now these ones have just been made by sugar and margarine. So, oh well you can see these, I think these are all the same, yeah. So these are all the same. Uh, they, aren't these lovely, these cases? Aren't they pretty? They're foil as well. So we sell all these on the website. What What are the racks called on the website? They're called and cooling racks. And how much Stackable are they? Stackable cooling racks. Um, I have to be honest, Sean, you'll have to go to the website and have a look. So just let me tell you now where everything is. If you go to our website, sugarandcrumbs.co.uk, that is where you can buy everything. There's three places to shop, okay? So the first thing is, is that we've got the sale on. The sale is running nicely. Now, when we started the sale, we didn't put everything in. So we put stock in, waited for that to go down, and then we put other lines in. And basically, I keep putting posts on of all the new things. So last night, I topped it up, we put cake lace in. We put chocolate drip in. Uh, what else did we put in? Sugar art. Sugar art, cake lace. I said cake lace. I don't know, but I put more things in. So go and have a look at that. So that's the sale. There's also the FB must have. So FB means Facebook and it's the Facebook lives must have. So that's here. So just go to there, look to today's date and everything that we're using today is in there. Now, before Maria went today, I forgot to tell her a few things and I will put them in after the live that we're going to use tonight. She did ask me, but things like piping bags and tips and things like that are not in there, but I will put them in when we finish the live tonight. Then the other thing is the sale of the ice and sugars is not in the must-haves and it's not in the offers either. You'll need to go to shop, shop by brand, sugar and crumbs, or you can go to shop, flavoured ice and sugars. Either way, you'll find the ice and sugars and the sugars are on, on a fantastic price, they're on at two pound a bag. So it's 500 grams, two grams at uh, two pound a bag, and I'm gonna show you how to bake with them. Lots of you haven't used them before and they are delicious. So today I've used banana split. Um, I've got some chocolate ones in the oven now, which I've used with our flavoured cocoa powders. I'm going to show you how to use that as well. And um, I'm going to make cherry bakewell in a minute. So I'm going to use the cherry bake ones. So when they come out of the oven, they do taste absolutely delicious. They're not strong, but you can definitely taste them. So it's also nice to enhance them with either um, a glaze icing sugar or with buttercream, which is what we're going to do. Yeah. So any questions, John? Uh, no, no, what? we've got a good audience, we've got 260 people. Fantastic. Uh, the cooling racks are 9 .99. Thank you, Sharon, for putting that information on. So, just, so, John, do you want to just tell everybody what we're doing for a minute while I check my chocolate cupcakes? Right, okay, a couple of things. Um, anybody who shares this Facebook Live enters our prize draw for a £25 voucher. So, all you need to do is just share this Facebook Live. To enter the draw, and I think the prize is drawn what a week later. Yes, so Thursday next, to Thursday. So be Monday Thursday. Is Monday. Okay, so Mondays is the prize is drawn the following Monday. Thursday, the prize is drawn the following Thursday. So that was the first thing. A um, couple of other things. We've got classes coming up. There's cupcake bouquet classes. The first one is the 29th of January, so it's only a few weeks away. And then we've got. One to follow up on the 19th of Feb and the 11th of March. All of those are filling up fast. We also have Amy Archibald here doing a wedding class on the 1st of February. Uh, that is a two day course and that's also on the website. And then later in the month, 22nd of February, we have Michael Lewis Anderson here who will be showing us how to do royal icing. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> um, and then on 1st of March, we have Emily Coyle. Don't forget, I've got a class in February. I've got it, I told you, 19th of February. Did you, did you mention that? Did I you did. remember the January one? I forgot I the did. January one, I It said 29th of January. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
I'm doing alright this week, aren't I? It's only your second week training, love. Oh. <laughs> if anybody is new in the kitchen, lots of the or lots of the regulars here will tell you that John is my husband, and uh, with that lovely Irish accent, and um, he he gets a little bit nervous sometimes when he's shouting out a few things. But he's going to read out all the comments tonight. Keep me in touch with what you all got to say, and he's going to repeat the offers and the classes and any questions you have. He will try and keep up with as many as you can, but he can't answer them all. Okay. So do make sure you shout out a hello and uh, give us a thumbs up and let us know if you're enjoying this. It's always really good. And don't forget to share, which is what John said. I'm going to do the draw um, for last Thursday, which was John's first day back in the kitchen. What did we make last week? I was making buttercream. Oh, we've um, airbrushed them. Yeah. Did you like them? I took mine to the hairdressers. They couldn't believe them. Because even though you saw them here in the cameras, in real life, I actually physically seen them. They were fantastic. Has anybody give them a go? Because they were amazing. And they looked so pretty. And I took mine to the hairdressers and they were like, wow, they just blinged. So, um, so we've got this on. So we're gonna start baking now. So uh, let's get all our things together. So what can you see on the camera there, John? Which camera are we going to? Um, yeah. So can you see in there okay? Uh, the bowl needs to come this way, come towards me a little bit. Yeah. It's just that when I put the lid down, you're not going to see it all. So I've just tried to... That's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, good. That's fine. All right then. So um, talking of offers, let me just tell you about these. Katie Sue. Katie Sue have brought these wonderful cake toppers out. Now, I've put these on offer as well. They only came out in November. Um, we listed them all in November, but January is the sale month and everything has to go in the sale. But I wanted to tell you about these because so many of you want to do decorations on your hoop, on your cakes with hoops, but then like you always ask, where do you get your hoops from? So um, we've got loads of different hoops. This one is a clear one. I just want to see how big it is. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so how big it That's is. Fine. Now this is perfect. So if you want to sit this on your cake and then put a little feature in the front, but it's ideal for tying all your um, roses. So you've like only been making your roses or your peonies or your little delicate things. You could do a little line of them round here. You could do a little ones round here. You could just put them on the top and then have something in the middle. So they're lovely. They come in clear wood so the wood effect i haven't brought a wood one with me but the wood effect you could actually paint it if you wanted to you could i wouldn't say with paint paint maybe with some um edible paint to give it a little bit of color or just give it that nice wooden effect there's happy birthday ones there's a unicorn ones and um, they come in rose gold they come in clear they come in wood come in gold and um and there's some white ones as well so I just thought I'd show you these, but I really just wanted to show you the size. So where's it, what have I done with that one now? There he is. So this one. Just a question, can, uh, can than someone that from one. Dublin, Ireland enter the draw from here? Yeah. Yeah, that's not a problem because it's for a voucher. Yeah. Uh, and we can send, we just send that across to you uh, by email. Yeah. So no problem entering from Dublin and that's from Shauna. Yeah, absolutely. Right, okay, let me just get some little bits then. So I'm just going to keep an eye on the oven because I have got some chocolate cupcakes in. So you're going to keep seeing me disappear in a minute. So can, can, you, can you share enough. this just while you're watching it or do you have to go back to the Facebook page? No, it? you can share it while you're watching it. So while you're sharing, um, don't share it into my own group. <laughs> okay, I've shared it in there myself. But do go and share it with your friends. So go and share it with your friends and just be careful of groups when you're posting them in groups, okay? Make sure the rules allow you to post uh, or share in there. Some groups can be funny. We don't like people sharing in our group because sometimes we're not quite sure what the video is that they're sharing. And as much as them are innocent, we have had situations where people have shared a video that isn't really for our audience or any audience we might add. Um, what else was I going to say to you? So do share and we'll, do, we'll draw, th last Thursday's draw, we'll draw it later on tonight, okay? Um, I hope you enjoyed Danielle's um, 
baking lesson on Monday. It was great fun. The chocolate brownies were amazing. The fudge was even more amazing. Uh, we had to get it out of here. There was that much of it because she made that lot here uh, before she arrived. She made a big load while she was here and we just had to send it down the warehouse because I've got to be honest, Maria and myself, we just keep, couldn't keep our hands off it. It was so good. Has anybody give it a go yet? So um, I will start getting my bowls together. So I'm just going to, I'm going to measure straight into the bowl, okay? So first of all, I'm going to do the normal baking way, baking just with margarine. And then afterwards, we'll do a batch with oil and then we'll do a chocolate batch. So we'll do three batches. We should get them all done in time, fingers crossed. So let me get my um, margarine. Okay, while Carol's getting that together, could everybody just let us know where you're from? Where you are this evening? Yeah, and if you're a newbie. And if yes, if this is your first time watching this. Also, we just need to let you know we've got a fantastic offer from the Cake Decoration and Sugar Craft magazine. They are doing three issues for just a pound at the moment. So, so you'll need this month. And it, it lasts for the whole of January. So if you want to do that, just check it out. You'll see it on our website on the home page. So that's just three issues for a pound and you don't have to sign up for any period of time you can cancel at any time right okay then so you can be organized if you want to and you can pre-weigh everything we're going to do eight ounce mixes um, eight ounce mixes, you know, a four ounce mix to me is a waste of time. A four ounce mix is just going to fill one eight inch tin. Okay, so if you've got a sandwich tin, that's all it's going to do. It's going to fill one. And everybody wants at least two layers for a sponge cake, uh, preferably three layers. So I'm going to do an eight ounce mix and that will make me about 16 cupcakes. Okay, 17 if I do them a little bit lower. So that's what we're gonna make. So we're gonna pop this up, the bowl onto the scales and I'm actually gonna weigh the measurements straight into the scales. So, um, Well, we've got people from all over. Fantastic. We've got as far south as Southampton, as far west as Hollyhead. We've got the Midlands. We've got the southwest in Cornwall. <laughs> Newcastle up in the northeast. We've got Liverpool. Fantastic, goody good. We've got people from Scotland. So thank you all for joining us. Oh, my uh, scales don't like this glass bowl. Let's put that on there a minute. Hold on. Right. Dina's, we've got Dina's in Los Angeles as ah. well. And is the fudge on YouTube? Uh, the live is. Maria put, uh, Maria put all the live together. So uh, yes, it is on YouTube. Right, I'm gonna have to weigh these because uh, the scales don't like the glass bowl on. I did them all in the silver bowl before. So we're gonna make an eight ounce mix. Uh, for those of you who want to know grams and cups, you're just going to have to convert it. It's dead easy. Just go to Google and put in eight grams, two cups, or eight grams, two, mil, uh, two ounces, no, sorry, eight grams, eight ounces to grams, eight ounces to cups, yeah? So we're doing an eight ounce mix. So just let me sort my scales out. There we are. Right, we're doing eight ounces. So we're just gonna do a basic cupcake recipe. All you regular bakers know how to bake. But there's newbies who don't. And, um, you know, people have asked me, they do ask me, Carol, can you just start again? I'm just new, can you start again? Now, we all have recipes. Everybody has their favorite recipe. I'm not saying you have to use mine, okay? What I'm saying is this is the way I do it. It's the way my grandma showed me how to do it. I'm quite happy with it. Um, I'm quite happy with it. Just needed a gentle reminder a couple of years ago. Um, so we've got people, we've got Leslie all the way from Shetland. So <laughs> don't, get, don't get much further north than that. No, is that Leslie Smith? Yep. Yeah. yeah, hi Leslie. I only remember because of how far away she is. Right, so we've got the, we've got the margarine in there. We're going to give it a beat. I'm going to move the speaker just over here a little bit, just so that you don't hear, to, well, try and make it less noise of the mixer going. 
So uh, let's get the mixer on. And, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to measure the flavoured icing sugar. So we're going to make cherry bakewell. So for those of you who don't know what the flavoured icing sugars are, because a lot of you have joined our community group or you've joined our page, and some of you actually don't know what sugar and crumbs is. Um, it's actually the name of our store. And the reason that we called it the name of our store was is that when we first started Sugar and Crumbs, all we was going to make was flavoured icing sugars. We had no intentions of actually having a shop. It was just about the icing sugars, which is why the store was called Sugar and Crumbs. Um, the flavoured icing sugars, we have had up to 56 flavours over the year, but we do take flavours off. You can see John rolling his eyes now, because it gets a bit manic when we have that many. But we do take flavours off because they're seasonal. But if you keep up onto the website, and I think Maria is starting to do some see, um, some little links under the sugar and crumbs, um, flavoured icing sugars, winter ones, summer ones, you know, seasonal ones. Now the cherry bakewell is an interesting flavour. It's one of my favourite flavours, and it's part of the reason why I like natural flavoured icing sugar. Almond, I absolutely love almond flavouring. So let me just give that a little green up in that minute. Just got to go and get the cupcakes out of the oven. One minute. One minute. Right, well, we've got people from all over the UK and we've also got people from the US. Uh, we've got Zoe from New Zealand. We've got Jenna from Washington, USA. Hey. And pretty much we've got people from the South Coast all the way to the Shetlands. Hey, so like. thank you very much everyone for joining us. Like. So another thing that we need to let you know, some of you may have seen on the group and on the page today that we are doing some demos uh, in conjunction with Crafters Companion. Uh, just let me stop you, John. Sorry. So I just needed to run away and get these out of the oven. So I'm going to make a batch of these. So I've just got these out of the oven. And they're actually chocolate lime cupcakes. So I'm going to put these into cool. Okay. Yes, we are doing some demos. Um, we had great success with our uh, demos at our, uh, well, at our warehouse down here in Stockport. And we are now doing some demos in conjunction with Crafters Companion, who are based in Newton A. Cliff, up in the northeast. Um, we'll be doing a Facebook Live with them on the 6th of February. And then on the 7th, we will be doing a demo at the Newton A. Cliff store at 10 a.m. Um, if you check the Facebook group and the Facebook page, there are links where you can book online for those demonstrations. They cost only a fiver, so it's five pounds for a two-hour demo. Um, so on the 7th it will be Newton A. Cliff. On the 8th of February it will, we will be doing a demo at their store in Chesterfield. And the following Saturday, on Saturday the 15th of February, we'll be doing a demo at their store in Evesham. So what we are really looking forward to is getting out and about, going to different parts of the country, which gives us an opportunity to meet different people. So I think we're back now to Carol. We are. I just had to interrupt him because nobody could hear him doing that with his foot <laughs> so, and I could hear it. So, um, right, so what John was saying about the classes is um, we do demonstration mornings down at our warehouse uh, once a month on a Saturday. I haven't lined up this year's yet, if I'm honest, um, mainly because we knew that we were working with Crafters Companions in February and um, we wanted to get that out of the way and then we're going to start maybe looking at things whether we're going to bring them back March, April, May. So John and I need to look into that. Um, talking about the live demos, um, the Facebook Live that we will be doing, it was on a Thursday. It won't be on our channel, it will be on Crafters Companion, so I'll be emailing you all and asking you to come and join us over there. Um, on the Friday, that on the Friday mm -hmm. is the first demo, is it? Yeah, Friday the 7th so of February. If it sells out, message them because we can get a second session in but we have to fill the first session first so we, we can do a morning and we can do an afternoon so we, what we want to do is get the morning session filled first and then once it's full if you want to email them message them tell them you want to see if you can open up a second session but they won't open it at the moment because we, the last thing we want is two sessions half full we want to get one full and then the second one full so we've now got the margarine here in our mixer. So I'm just gonna turn it on again, get my spatula. 
And then what I was going to say to you about the flavoured icing sugars is, almond is my favourite flavour. And I used to love making cherry almond cupcakes and um, cherry almond tarts, baked well tarts, uh, when I was a young girl. But when using a liquid essence, I found that I've got a bit of a shaky hand and I've still got a shaky hand. So when I used to put the one teaspoon in, into the mix, it was always overflowed. And if anyone's ever used the liquid essence, when you overflow it, it's really powerful and strong. And there's no way you can dilute your mix. So you, you eat your cake and you're like, oh gosh, that really is almondy. So I wanted to find something that would make it a convenient product, that the consistency of the flavour would be the same all the time. And that's why we've used the natural flavouring. The other thing with the natural flavouring is, it's suitable for nut allergy sufferers. So this has got no nut in it because all the natural flavouring comes from a plant-based source. It's freeze-dried, it's um, pulsed into a liquid, it's freeze-dried, and then it comes out to us. Now, it's the most expensive way to make flavouring. And you know, when we speak to people who supply our flavouring for us, they're always saying, have you not thought about doing liquids carrots? So much cheaper. But we like it like this because we want to be able to offer you the convenience and you know what, we all love baking at night time. Who wants to run to the shop and get strawberries in the middle of the night or bananas or whatever else? So we like it. And it also means that every bag is exactly the same flavour. So if you, you know, it, it doesn't, you don't ever get one batch stronger than another batch. So let me just see how this is doing. So in here, I've got eight ounces of margarine. Now I do like to just get this nice and whippy which we're going to do. So it's nice and soft, you can see that now. So just a quick point there, Sarah's just saying the Chesterfield one doesn't have the, the demo on it. it. It should do now, I checked it just before we went live. And it was on, wasn't it? And it had, it had gone on, but it wasn't, it wasn't on earlier today. I did put up a response to say that it would go up within the next 48 hours. And um, John, just before we went live, John did say, oh look, it's gone up, so we're pleased about that. So go and get booked on as quick as you can. Now, lots of you have asked, can we go elsewhere around the country? This is something that we're doing with Crafters Companion. We're working with them. They've actually invited us along and asked us would we do this with them. And we thought, what a great opportunity. And they've only got three stores. So uh, we can't, you know, if we went on a road trip, where would we go? So, <laughs> as much as I would love to come and visit you all, it's like, where would we go? But if you know of an outlet that's got lots of stores and you want to get in touch with them and ask them to get in touch with us, then we'd be more than happy to talk to them. I just see John there like that on a road trip. <laughs> Should we hire a camper van, John? <laughs> Should I press the stop switch? Pardon? Should I press the stop yeah. button? <laughs> So, got my, got my margarine. Now, I'm not using butter, okay? Sure, um, there's you, Claire coming to see us in Chesterfield. Fantastic. I'm not using butter. You can use butter. There's nothing wrong with using butter, but I've always used margarine. And then, so we're on an eight ounce mixture, remember? I've weighed out the flavoured ice and sugar. Now, all our ice and sugars are white in colour. Have you got that on the camera there, John? So all our ice and sugars are white in colour, apart from the chocolate ones. Now, if it says white chocolate, obviously it would be white in colour. If it just says chocolate, it means it'd be brown in colour. Um, we do have a couple of seasonal ones that are a beige colour, and that's because we've added cinnamon to them. So when in the winter we've got mulled wine and we've got um, apple crumble, they've got like a little beige colour to it. But um, we like them white. We've decided not to colour them. Um, the reason we've decided not to colour them is colour they're colouring um, as additives in. Um, and it doesn't always make them uh, suitable for a vegetarian or vegan diet. So what we've done is, is kept this completely natural. So all our sugars are suitable for a vegan and vegetarian diet. They're also gluten-free. Um, sugar is gluten-free, okay? Um, but some not all of you are aware of that. So, so Dina has said we could come to Los Angeles. Well, we may make an exception well, you know what, yeah. for that. <laughs> <laughs> Dina, I was getting in touch with all the stores in Los Angeles. Um, talking about that, quite a lot of you have asked us, um, do we supply to America? Well, we do. We supply to two um, stores in America. One is Country Sweetheart Kitchen. Country Kitchen Sweetheart. <laughs> okay. Country Kitchen Sweetheart. What did I say? Country Sweetheart Kitchen. 
So a country oh, kitchen sweet tart. Right. And the other one, is it the sweet, uh, the little sweet chalet? The sweet chalet shop. Sweet chalet shop. Okay, so they're the two suppliers in the USA. Now, we do want other suppliers, but you know, they're not gonna to come to us. Our, our package, our product is quite a heavy product, and they're not gonna to come to us unless they know about us. And the only way they can know about us is you have to contact them. So if you've got your favorite supply store in the USA, you don't go and tell them. Say, come and watch Sugar and Crumbs, watch their lives, we want their sugars. And that's the only way we're going to get in touch with them. America is such a big country, there's just no way that John and I can contact people over there. But it would be better if it was like big stores who've got several shops um, because they can buy bigger amounts and then we can get it across there on pallets. It makes it a lot cheaper, it brings the price down. So you'll see that I've added in the sugar now. So we're on eight ounces of margarine, eight ounces of flavoured icing sugar, and then we're gonna do four eggs. The eggs is always half the amount of your sugar and margarine. So we're gonna do four eggs. large eggs I don't weigh my eggs you know some people are really particular and they weigh their eggs and everything I don't do that at all so what I do is I get my mixer on now and I pop in one egg at a time oh two went in there we go slippy little fellas so while that's being incorporated let's weigh out the flour Now my favourite choice of flour is McDougal's or McDougal Supreme Cake Flour and um, I really love that, I absolutely love it. Um, but you can use any self-raising baking flour, okay? So this one is from the pantry, which I think is this one, Aldi, John? Yeah, the pantry yeah. Aldi. So this one's Aldi. To be fair, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I just like the McDougal ones because it brings a lighter sponge. Um, but you know what, use a good, you know, use self-raising flour. Um, I don't sip. You can sieve if you want to. I don't sieve. You'll see that I don't sieve our, our icing sugars either. Generally, when I get flour, um, our icing sugars you don't need to sieve. When I get flour, I sort of see how it is, and if it's okay in the bag, I don't sieve. If it's been stored in the cup in the cupboard for a couple of weeks, then I may sieve it. You know, it just depends how it comes out in the bowl. Um, with this, you do not need to add baking powder, okay? It's already in it, that's why it's called self-raising. And some of you will wonder what's gone wrong with your cakes, and it's because you've used self-raising and you've used baking powder. Don't use both. So it's eight ounces of flour. Why, why do you mix the margarine first before adding the sugar? I usually mix both together. Yeah, personal preference. until it's really nice, light, white and fluffy. Uh, it's so hot in this kitchen, sorry. Um, and I've got so many lights on it on me in here. So, uh, my son came in early and he went, oh my goodness, oh, it's so bright in here, but it really, it may not look bright to you, but it really is bright and hot. Um, yes, yeah, so it's just something I've always done. I just like to see uh, the margarine, even if I'm using butter for a Madeira cake, I like to whip that till it's really nice, light and fluffy. Um, I don't think it really matters, you can mix them both together. Some people like to do an all-in-one cake mix. Now, I don't like doing an all-in-one cake mix. So, two eggs have already gone in. Just going to put another egg in. Right, Gemma, who is in the US, was asking what was the name of the store again. It was the Sweet Chalet Shop, which is based in Florida. I can't remember exactly where. Mm. And Country Kitchen Sweet Art. And I will look up and find out where they are. So they don't necessarily have to be close to you because they both um, sell online. So yeah. can obviously deliver to you. And Tina Pines just booked on the Chesterfield store and doing the, the 220 mile round trip. Oh, good girl. <laughs> 
So, uh, I know Tina, I've met Tina at the show, it's a great lady. Um, the sh the, uh, lots of you commented about the Chester store not being online, it's online now. So if you do want to get on, get booked on. If it does get booked up over the next couple of weeks, do email Crafters Companions and say you really want to come. I can't tell them that you want to come. You have to email them and tell them you want to come and there's a possibility they will open up another session on that Friday and another session on the Saturday. And where are we the following Saturday, John? Evesham. Where's Evesham? Uh, Worcestershire, which is sort of south of Birmingham. All oh, right, oh, we are traveling down, up and down the country, aren't we? Yeah. We've got a busy three days, John and I, on our road trip together. Wouldn't that be fun, love? Can't wait. <laughs> John and the food mixer and I. <laughs> Right, so that's my eggs incorporated, okay? Now, if you, let me just, let me just do this a moment. Turn it off. If your, if your mix starts to curdle, do not worry, okay? So some of you might have a little bit of a panic. You don't need to panic. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna scrape this down. Are you on this camera, John? I'm on the one looking down. Yeah. So I'm just gonna scrape it down just to make sure we've got everything. Yeah, then I'm going to give it another mix and then I'm going to add the flour. Now, what you can do at this stage, if you don't like the curdling, you can add a spoonful of flour from your weighed out flour, not an additional spoonful, okay? And if you want, you can add two. The mixer I've got the mixer the wrong way round to the way I normally use it so that you can see in the bowl and um, I'm frightened to death that I'm going to turn it on while it's in the up position and then we're all splattered in it which will be fun because I keep going to turn it on because that's the hat that's the way I would normally go to lift it up and down so we've got this now incorporated gonna bring this up now, for those of you who can bake, okay, you may be saying I'm doing it wrong. This may be the way that you do it. Um, it doesn't really matter, really. We all have our own way. You know, we all have our, our own favorite way, the way our grandma showed us, our favorite recipe book. You know, my favorite recipe books was Delia Smith. I love Delia Smith books. And um, I don't know if any of you, are, uh, I'm sure there's plenty of you that's my age. I don't know if any of you remember, and it's one of the first cookery books I got. Um, Delia Smith brought out three books and the first one, it went off, it went off madness, went off uh, how to boil an egg <laughs> and she just basically went back to basics with everything. So there's three recipe books, I've still got them actually and, um, and I did like watching all her stuff, I actually liked her as well. Goodness knows how old she is now. Are you eating our cupcakes John? Yes. <laughs> So we've now put the flour in. Now with the flour, okay, don't mix. So fold it in. So I don't know whether you can see this on the camera, John. Can you see that there? Yep. Let me just move that out of the way. So what to do is don't mix, fold in. And make sure you lift it all up so that you get it all from the bottom. And you just keep lifting up. You will get little you will get little flower pockets, so make sure you lift them up. Yeah. Now, when I was a young girl, my grandma used to put in a splodge of milk or a splodge of boiled water. It's entirely up to you. So what I do is I use use one tablespoon. Which camera are we on, John? So I use one tablespoon of cooled boiled water per four ounces. So we've got an eight ounce mix, so there's two. Okay, um, I believe it makes a more lighter cake mix. Again, you don't have to, it's just what I do. And then what I do then is just mix it all in. Now at this stage now, you can put it back in the mixer, but for no more than 30 seconds. So we're just gonna put it back on the mixer, and then we're gonna get these in our cupcake cases, we can get them in the oven, and then we're going to make another batch with oil. 
Um, I've never made cakes with oil before and uh, I have to say I'm fairly impressed. And Danielle was here on Monday and um, I've seen all the recipes with them for oil and I don't know why I've not thought about making them with oil because I'm sure lots of you have used packet mixes and the packet mixes, the, you know, the, um, they, they, they ask you to use oil and water. Right, no more than 30 seconds. And I think Mary Berry says 20 seconds. But can you see how nice and smooth that mix is now? You see? Right, so let me just move this mixture out of the way a minute. Let's move everything else out of the way. There's my damp cloth moment. Feel free to answer any questions, John. How's our audience anyhow? Are they the all still with us? The audience is really good. We've got 336 people. Are you all learning to make cupcakes? <laughs> so I've got two tins here already lined out. Let's see how many we're going to how many we're going to fill. So uh, do you know what? I might not do all of them. But you, I might just leave half the batch. In fact, I will leave half the batch. Now. The other thing is with cupcakes as well, some people really like to weigh how much they're putting in their cupcakes, cupcake case. Personally, I don't really want to be sitting these, if you have a look at these, I don't want to be sitting these on scales and putting in 35 grams or 40 grams of mix. We're just going to eyeball, eyeball it. So while I do this, John can flip between um, cameras and then he can answer some of your questions. So feel free to shout out and I'll answer what I can. I don't think there's any questions that I've missed. Well, while you're there's looking people, in people here... Saying, people are saying that they, they do use oil for their cakes. Yeah. Well, good. While we're using oil, I've done my first batch tonight. So, when you're looking at a normal mix, I'm using an 8-ounce mix. So, I've used 8 ounces of um, sugar, 8 ounces of margarine, 8 ounces of flour, and 4 eggs. So, what would I swap my margarine for in weight? Because I believe it's three thirds. So if we look at um, if we look at it's look at a whole, it's three quarters. Sorry, not three thirds. Yes, it is. What are you looking at? If you look at a whole one yeah, and divide it into quarters, yeah. then I want three quarters. When I looked at it for oil, so I need three quarters. You need less. Okay. Yes. So I'm just asking there. And to be fair, I did a batch before, and it was lovely. Uh, when you fill in your cupcake cases, okay. You need to fill them just over half full. Don't underfill. So half full. So what I do is I go around them once, go around them again. Who likes licking the bowl? I remember having this conversation when I started uh, baking um, oh, many years ago. I had this conversation with John and he was like, oh God, who licks the bowl? I went, I do. <laughs> who else licks the bowl? <laughs> he said, it's got raw egg in it. I went, I don't care. <laughs> but I would never eat raw egg otherwise. Um, and it's amazing how kiddies love it, don't they? We pass that habit on to our kiddies. So. Is that a muffin tin or a cupcake tin that you're using? I'm using a cupcake tin. Well, now, you can call it what you want. Let me just have, let me show you. You've got the low version, which is for your fairy cakes, okay? And then you've got your deep version, which they call a muffin tin. I call it cupcake tin because it's basically standard cupcake cases. Um, your big tin for your big muffins. I'm just find up. 
So for your big muffins, you need these. Now to be fair, I used to sell these via Wilton, but I'm struggling to get hold of them at the moment. So, um, but they're for your big muffins, with your big tulip wraps in. So if you were using a nice, a nice cream scoop, would you use a medium size as an equivalent to your tablespoons? Yes. Well, lots of people like using an ice cream scoop. I hate using an ice cream scoop because you put the first one in, second one in, and then you end up having to scrape out round because even though that scoop scoops it, it doesn't scoop it out clean, and then it's always hanging underneath the spoon. So I just, I just always like to use two spoons. But again, personal choice, isn't it? So let's go and put these in the oven. Okay, so I've just made sure, can you see there, John? So I've just made sure all my cases are nice. Um, I'm actually baking them in the oven on 160. Um, my oven is a bit older now, um, but normally I usually bake long and slow on 140, but my oven's a bit older, so I'm on 160. And also a little bit higher will make them rise a little bit more as well. But if you want them really flat, bake them a bit lower. Yeah, so let's put these in the oven now. And how long are they in the oven for? 20 minutes. So it's quarter to nine. So let's get the next batch on. So did anybody come back with the answer for the oil? I don't know there's a question. Yes I did. I asked how much oil would they use? Just to see if I'd got the right one. Because I worked out my oil. No, I don't see an answer to that. Yep. I didn't actually know so if that. any of you I got the if any of you got the answers to the oil. So I'm using an eight ounce mix. How much oil would you swap for the butter? Um, so what we're going to do now is just need to check again. Flavoured icing sugar and oil. So we're going to use eight ounces of the flavoured icing sugar. So for those of you who like to work in grams and in um, cups, all you need to do is go to Google and put eight ounces to cups, to grams, and it'll tell you. Um, just another tip as well. Just another tip as well. Your ingredients need to be exact. So when you're using your flour, your margarine, and your um, sugar, they need to be exact. So it's six ounces of oil. Yeah, that's what they are. That's what I said. Three quarters. Right, so we're going to put the sugar in now this time. Let's go and put the sugar in. So we've got no margarine to put in because we're going to use oil. Yeah, we've got it through. Thank you, thank you everybody for the answers there. No, we're good. I'm and glad. yes, I think Karen, yeah, she had answered that before. Yeah, good. I'm glad about that because that's exactly what I thought as well. And I've got to be honest, I made them this, I made them tonight. What time did I get in? So about six ounces. Yeah, six ounces is yeah. the equivalent to 170 ml yeah, oil. Yeah, that's right. Perfect. That's exactly what I've got on my phone because I had to Google. Um, I came running, come running in at half past six tonight. That's the first thing I had to Google. And then I put the oil in and watch this. When I put the oil in, um, I thought, oh my goodness, I've done this wrong. I've really done it wrong. And uh, it looked... Um, just going to take out a little bit of oil because I've lost a bit too much. And I thought, oh, Carol, you've done this wrong now. You've ruined it. But it actually all pulled nicely together. And I was quite chuffed, really, because um, I've used packet mixes in the past and it actually was like a packet mix. So um, it's basically three quarters of whatever your mix is, isn't it? Does that make sense? I'm going to put that in there. So we've got the oil in there. Let's just get this on. So I just need to make sure we don't put off. Sorry, that we don't puff up a big cloud. So we're just going to make two batches, one with oil, one without oil. Um, I think they both come out perfectly fine. I showed you, showed you them earlier. So we'll get this one, we'll make a chocolate batch. Now the chocolate batch that I've made already is just with margarine. So the chocolate batch that I make next, I'll make with um, the oil. So I didn't get time to make another one. So you can see on the bowl here, John, are you on this bowl? I can no. just go and get a... Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just put the
how long they bake for. They're, they're in the oven for 20 minutes at 160 degrees. And did we put them in? What time did I put them in? 10 past. No, 10 to 9. No. Yeah, 10 to 9. Quarter to nine they went in. Thank you, June. Yeah, good. I was just checking they were paying attention. So we've got our oil just in as here. Just well someone was. Eh? Just as well someone was. Yeah, I know. Just checking. Any particular brand of vegetable oil? Uh, this one's Tesco. So that's our oil and our flavoured icing sugar. So I'm just going to drop it down again, turn it on, and then we're going to drop our eggs in. Should have been one at a time, but again, two slippy little fellas slipped in first. So what do you want to learn next week then? So, Monday, we have got Emily Coyle in the kitchen. Now she's going to come over and show you her cake cream. I don't know what she's actually going to make, but she's actually going to bring her autumn cake with her, provided it survives the flight. So she's going to bring that with her, and that's a class that she's doing with us on the 1st of March. She'll leave the cake here. I think I've got two or three spaces available, so get on that class, it's a long day. We've also got Amy Archibald here at the beginning of March, at the beginning of February, 1st of February, first, isn't it? 1st of February, Amy's here for yeah. a wedding cake class. And I think there's two places left available for that. That's a fantastic class as well. Both those classes are amazing. Uh, different techniques all together, but well worth the investment, especially if you really want to make, you know, wedding cakes, really want to make them. Definitely worth the, the investment. Um, I'm just going to put the other two eggs in. And then I'm just going to go and get a fresh bowl for my flour, which will weigh out. Um, I've got cupcake bouquet classes. Now there's one in January, one in February, one in March. The 29th of January, the 19th of February and the 11th of March. Now the cupcake bow classes, cake, cake classes are fantastic. Now it's not the ones in the box, it's the ones where you make the big bouquet with all the big tissue paper around and everything. Anybody who's been on that class, if you're watching tonight, let everybody know. In fact, if you've been to a class in this kitchen, let everybody know how fabulous the classes are here. We've never had a bad class. In fact, we've never had a bad student, which is great. I feel so lucky. All our students have been amazing, great sense of humour, good personality. They've come in, they've learned a lot. While you're here, we do feed you. John and I, we're quite good. We feed you, private parking, and it really is a nice one day or two day course with either our tutors or with myself. Um, when you get taught by me, it's very like this in the kitchen, very down to earth, very relaxed, very chilled. Let's just go with it. And um, I'm doing the cupcake bouquet classes. I'm going to make um, a 19 cup bouquet. Um, or a 24 one, whatever the ladies want to make on the day. Normally we make um, a 3, a 7 and a 12 and the ladies go home with two cupcakes so that they can share them. But I think now in classes we'll just make them really big one, make them really impressive. And uh, I'll show you lots of skills, lots of piping skills. And I think in the next few classes we'll use a couple of moulds as well. So I've mixed this in now. I just need to go and get another clean bowl for my flour. There we go. So we've got a clean bowl for my flour. So 
that's where the flower out so I'm just using this one is Aldi self raising flour and again as I say you do not need to add any baking powder whatsoever make sure it's exact because we're doing an eight ounce mix it has to be exactly eight ounces of flour not eight ounces and one eight ounces so we're going to lift this up make sure we scrape everything off okay and then we're over to here and then we're going to fold in the flour you just pull that all in forward way. there perfect I'm going to move the mixer go. Yep. I knew it would happen tonight. So we're just going to fold it in. Make sure you lift up. So it's not beating, it's lifting up. Can you see? Fold in. And we will stick this on the mixer and just give it 30 seconds, but we just want to lift up. Lots of people said that they've come to the classes and had a great time. That's good, good. <laughs> Hopefully, Rose, you had a fun-filled day rather than an unfilled day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, everybody who's come to the classes has had a great time. Not all the ladies we've met have been fabulous. So you might see I've just popped a little flower. Uh, can you see that flower? Ball of flower there, just pop that. So you see any of those, make sure you just pop them out. Yeah, Liz is asking local hotels. Yes, there are plenty of hotels locally. Yeah, if I was you, book the Premier Inns. There's two Premier Inns here in Stockport. There's Stockport South Premier Inn and Stockport Central. I normally recommend the Aroma Lodge, which is brilliant. Um, but on a weekend, they've always got weddings and events on. And uh, sometimes you don't get your night's sleep. Um, and they seem to send you an email to say, if you want a quiet room, we'll charge you an extra tenner. I do think that extra tenner is a great investment. What I will say about the Alma Lodge is it's a lovely hotel. It's a family run hotel and um, they do do really nice breakfasts and evening meals in there. Whereas I think the Premier Inns are attached to the local beef eaters, aren't they? Unless they've got their own restaurant in. Right, so that's all incorporated. Can you see it? I'm not going to put this in the mix, I actually think it's fine. So I think by the time I've got these in the uh, cupcases, yeah. So I'm just making sure that there's no, no, no flower balls. So there you go, one made with the oil, one made with margarine. So, so Jane's asking if anybody licks the bowl when it's made with oil. Mm. Actually, it tastes nice. I tasted it before. Mm. It doesn't taste seriously. Not, not, not for me, thank you. John won't lick the ball anyhow, but it tasted nice. Seriously, there was no difference. So uh, let me just get my spoons out. Spoon, spoon, spoons. One second. So what time is it now? Oh, I've been in 15 minutes. How many of you do lick the bowl? I tell you, my, my granddaughter, Jasmine, all my grandchildren have loved licking it. Even my own children, they loved it. I don't know whether they'll do it so much now, now they're older. But, um, but all my children have done it. And uh, my grandchildren uh, have done it as well. They love it. But my um, Jasmine, who is our three-year-old, she is so funny. We bake with her, and I think some of you have seen some pictures. And uh, John has to chase him around being the monster. So when they, when they say, Grandpa, chase me, chase me, chase me, be the monster. But um, all Jasmine can think about, she's interested in the baking, but her real interest is, when is she going to lick the ball? That's all you get out of her, isn't it, John? Yeah. And she's a bit buttercream crazy as well. So question, are you adding any milk or water to this batch? No. Sorry, I should have said no, no. It's quite liquidy, which is great. And we've had a request for cheesecake or tarts to be made next week. Yeah, I'll make some cheesecakes. If you like. 
Um, I'll make two cheesecakes. I'll make a chocolate one for you and a white one. So Thursdays is going to be our baking sessions. Okay, so what we'll do is every week we'll ask you what you want to make. I've got a whole list of things that I want to add. So if you can't think of something, but you know, cheesecakes was on the list. Um, shortbread biscuits, we'll make those. We'll make Viennese swirls uh, one week. Um, roulade, um, meringue kisses, we'll make those. Um, there's loads of things to make, isn't there? And bear in mind, I am not a baker. So a lot of you will see it is that, you know what? I'm just like you guys in the kitchen, giving it a go. So uh, I never get a chance to bake normally, unless we're live. It's generally the only time I do get to bake or when I do baking classes. Um, I've not booked any of the baking classes on this year, basically because I just haven't got time. And, um, but the baking classes, the people who've been on the baking classes, is anybody watching who's been on the baking classes? Everybody's exhausted when they do them because we do a lot in one day on those. So make sure you fill your cupcake cases over half full. Don't be stingy and filling them less than half. They need to be half full. So it's like one and a half spoonfuls. Um, I'm not going to put so much in these, these ones because these are a bit smaller. So we'll just have a little bit less in them. Other request. Um... Almond slices, yeah. carrot cake with cream cheese buttercream, yeah. shortbread, millionaire shortbread, yeah. chocolate fudge cake. Good. We've had a request for Richard Crompton to come and do a bread demo. Yes. And Rob Allen. Right, so I'm not going to do all the, all the cupcakes. We'll just do these and get these in. See this here, if you spill any around here, for those who like licking the bowl, these are called chef finger treats. <laughs> John's appalled. That's why you're not on camera. <laughs> Did you not show them, John? No. Oh, he's awful, isn't he? <laughs> right, let's go and put these in the oven. Right, they're four minutes past nine. The others are doing nicely. Right, okay, so. We've got chocolate cupcakes to make now, so let's get those made. Now I do need to have a little bit of a clear up because we're getting a little bit giddy here. So let me just get these out of the way. Now the ones I made before was with the butter, but what I'm gonna do is make the next ones with oil. Um, you can add chocolate drops to these as well, and we'll add chocolate drops to these. Um, I didn't add them to the other ones, I just used the cocoa powder. So let me get this lot out of the way. Let me get some clean bowls, and uh, we'll get on to the next batch. John, do you want to ask any questions or anything? Um, yeah, we're going to put a for Rob to come as well to do, do another demo. Uh, we love having Rob in the kitchen, actually, and I must get in touch with him if he's watching tonight. I haven't seen him pop up, to be no. honest. No, but uh, he normally watches the Monday ones. Let's get the mixer back on. While Carol's doing that, if anybody likes and shares this Facebook Live, they enter into a prize draw to win a £25 sugar and crumbs voucher. And the winner will be drawn next Thursday. So we do this on each of the lives. We do it on a Monday, and then the winner's drawn the following Monday. And on the Thursday, the winner is drawn the following Thursday. That's right. So again, if you share this live to enter the draw, now making the chocolate cakes, we're not going to use flavoured icing sugars, okay? What we're going to use is, we're going to use a product called our flavoured cocoa powders. So we will be using caster sugar in this mix. So I'll just get my scales again. And I'll show you, I'll talk to you about the cocoa powders in a minute. So, um, caster 
sugar, margarine. So let's get the scales on. Do an eight ounce mix again. Oh, open a new packet. Let's do this one. So eight ounces again. Don't worry, I'm keeping an eye on those cakes. I just checked them before. So eight ounces. Of, oh, I'm doing oil, aren't I? Da, 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 da. Ding dong, ding dong. Hang on a minute. Reverse, reverse, reverse. Margarine back in there. I did margarine as well. We're on oil. So, sugar. Did any of you remember that we were doing oil ones? So, eight ounces of sugar. That's too much sugar. I've got nine ounces in there. So let's take some out. So I'm looking forward to doing Crafters Companion. It'd be a nice way to get to meet you all. Because John and I see so many of you at the show. Thanks to chat to you all. I think it'd be lovely to do that demo. And if we can get two demos going, that would be absolutely great. So sugar in the bowl. Yep, Sarah had noticed that it was supposed to be oil. Yep, in fact, Wendy the same. When did you notice when I told you? When I did reverse reverse. <laughs> Six ounces of oil. So I'm just clearing my scales there. Just using regular vegetable oil. Some of you might prefer to use other oils. Um, as I say, I've never used oil in cupcakes unless it's been a, a mix. Never actually made them with them. So bang on six ounces there. So we're going to pour that in. Get this one in here. Let's get that down. Let's turn that on. So clean bowl. So what we're going to do is now is our flour. Now we're using eight ounces of flour, so it's the same as the oil this. What we're going to do now, instead of eight ounces of self-raising flour, we're going to take two ounces away. So we're going to use six ounces of uh, self-raising flour. And that's a bit like the margarine, eight ounces of margarine, but when we're going to use oil, we, use, we take two ounces away and use six ounces. So we want six ounces. we're going to use our product for cocoa powder. Now, we do five flavours, but we're about to discontinue one which is coconut. Um, the five flavours that we do is chilli, cherry, orange and lime. They're all amazing. You can make buttercream. On the back of the packet, it tells you how to make buttercream and easy brownies. Now, I know Danielle showed you her way of making chocolate brownies on Monday, but on here is my way. It's a very, very easy recipe. I'm all about making it as easy as possible. So if you're in the mood for chocolate brownies, you can knock these up in no time at all. Um, so we're going to make chocolate lime uh, cupcakes. John has already tasted one already. Don't know if you heard him eating. Anybody who's regular in the kitchen knows that John is usually prowling up and down on the hunt for food. It's a big strapping Irish lad and it, there's nothing fills him up. So uh, cupcakes it was tonight. So we've got eight ounces of self-raising flour. We're going to, six ounces of self-raising flour, sorry. And we're going to top it up to eight ounces with the cocoa powder. So that's two ounces of cocoa powder. And then once I've weighed that, I'm just going to check my cupcakes. So don't forget to like and share. Lots of people have won a £25 voucher. It's been a great start to the new year. Everybody has liked that idea. So it means that you can do some free shopping in our shop. So, and then I'm going to crack some eggs. Where's my eggs? So we need four eggs. One, two, three. I don't 
don't know what I'm going to do with all these cakes. So I'll have to find homes for all these. Or, so, for any local friends. Right, let's just turn that up a little bit. Let's turn that up. We're going to add two eggs in now. So one. Them incorporate. So I'm just going to check on my cupcakes and John can read out anything else. One second. Uh, in terms of quantities, it was six ounces of the self raising flour and two ounces of the flavoured cocoa powders. Right. Okay, so these are the cupcakes that we've made. Um, as you see, as I said to you before, I actually don't weigh or um, I don't weigh my mixture. I just do over half, and um, some of them, some of them have got a little bit more in. They're all little bits of different shapes and sizes. Some of you are a bit OCD and want to know exactly the same amount. That's entirely up to you. Some of you put the cupcake case on the scales and you weigh them and then stick them in the pan. I find that a bit difficult because they, they move about in the cupcake case. So, and some of you will use an ice cream scoop. Some of you might use a piping bag and uh, pour the mixture into a piping bag and then squeeze into the cupcake. Nothing's wrong, it's entirely up to you. So what I'm going to do now with these, can you see these on the camera there, John? Is that too near? A bit too near. Yeah. What about this camera? Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to leave them in the pan and I'm just going to put them on one of the cooling trays. I'm not taking them out of the pan at all, okay? And I'm not slamming them on the table either. Also, the other thing as well is, don't put them on anything cold. Now, the reason why you should do any of those things, these things have all got steam in the cakes. So if you slam them, the steam comes out and that forces the wrapper to open. Um, if you cover them, if you cover them with a tea towel, that keeps the steam in and it will force the, the cupcake case to open. Um, if you put them straight onto something cold, exactly the same. So what we want to do is we want the air ventilation going round, yeah? So we'll have a look at these afterwards. Yes, the cupcakes were made with stork. made with store. The second batch is in the oven that's made with oil and now we're doing the chocolate cupcakes. So we're going to add the other two eggs one at a time. Are you enjoying this line? Yeah, we've still got a good audience. We've still got 283 people watching. Yeah, very good. We do lose audiences because people will come in and they start watching all at first and then as time goes on, once they've seen it once, they don't need to see them all or see everything. We're going to make some buttercream in a moment, so I'm just going to clean up this. So while that's mixing, I've got butter in the machine here. Um, I'm not sure if you can see this machine or not, but um, basically I've already whipped the buttercream, the butter already. So um, just one second. So I'm just going to straight down for a minute. Now all I'm doing in here is a small batch of buttercream. Now this is the buttercream that I would use for the Russian piping tips as well. So I'm only going to do a small batch. So it's 250 grams of butter and 500 grams of icing sugar. Normally when I'm doing lots of cupcakes I use a minimum of 500 grams of butter and a kilo of icing sugar. But we don't need that much. Okay. And then I'm going to show you how to do a roast swirl, two-tone, um, and then I, um, we're going to do some um, butterfly cakes. So let's do this, get this on. And because my cupcakes that are cooled already are banana, I'm actually going to use the banana flavoured icing sugar. They can dilute this, okay? So some of you like to make it go a long way. I do watch one or two of you and you say you use plain icing sugar and maybe two tablespoons of that. I don't think that's strong enough personally. Um, just going back to the recipe, can you just run through the in what is currently in the chocolate yep. cupcake recipe? I will. Just one, let me turn that off. So 
this one, this mix here that we're doing is the one with oil, okay? So in here, we have got, um, now we're making chocolate cupcakes this time, so we're not using flavored icing sugar. So we've used um, eight ounces of caster sugar, six ounces of oil, okay? So if you think of a whole and divide it into four, we only want three quarters. So eight, three quarters of that is six. Does that make sense? Um, so we only want three quarters. So that we put in six ounces of oil. And then I've used eight ounces of flour, which I would normally use for white cupcakes. But because we're using um, cocoa powder, the eight ounces of flour I've now reduced to six ounces, but I've topped it back up with our flavored cocoa powder, okay? Now do watch it when you buy this, because we do have some chocolate flavored icing sugars in a very similar bag. When the two bags are together, you can see that they're completely different. But this does say flavoured cocoa powder on it. On the back, there's a recipe to make chocolate brownies. There's a recipe to make buttercream. You do not throw the whole bag of this into your butter to make buttercream. Read the recipe. 35 to 40 grams, that's all you need. Okay, so we've got it in the bowl here. John, can you see this in the bowl? Version. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to turn the mixer off now because it's been going long enough. And this is the oil recipe. So I'm just going to scrape off all the oil there. So we've got the oil um, cakes, cupcakes in the oven. We've got the ones that were made with margarine just come out the oven. Can you see on the camera here, John? Mm -hmm. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop all this in this is the cocoa powder and the self-raising flour do not add baking powder you do not add baking powder to self-raising flour it's already in the flour don't add any more yeah now some of you may disagree with me that's entirely up to you but my thing is don't add it it's already in uh, baking powder is to be added to plain flour so we're just folding this in so I don't know whether you can see, I'm just folding it in. Yep, we can see. And this is a delicious lime flavour. Um, what I'm going to do with this is, I'm just going to throw in a few chocolate chips as well. And if you see any bubbles of flour, just make sure you break them. Okay. So we're just going to scrape round the bowl. And you will see them sort of come up. Now we don't add water to the oil ones. We don't need to add any water. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a mix on the mixer for 30 seconds, no more than 30 seconds. Some cupcake cases. So let's get all this lot out of the way. So we'll fill up some cupcake cases. Right, okay, be truthful. When you get your cupcake cases, who licks your finger and sticks them in there? Don't. Little damp cloth. Pull them off that way. I've seen it so many times. People go, Ugh, and then they do that with their cases. Uh, with foil cases, okay. Just, you can feel by the weight of them, so they all feel nice and thin, so it's no, they know there's no doubles. So again, sometimes you might just have to peel them like this. So I can feel that this one feels heavier. If you're not sure if it feels heavier, just pick up a single one and feel another one. You will feel it, believe me. I love foil cases. Absolutely love them. This one's a triple one, I think, actually. Yes, it is. Yeah. Right. Rough. Okay, let me get two spoons. Start doing those again. Two spoons. Any questions we need to answer, John? No, not at the moment. So 
I'll let me just lift this up. So you see this nice liquid batch. Now this you could pour into a piping bag if you wanted to. Yeah, there's nothing stopping you doing that. Pour it into a piping bag and then squeeze it into your cupcake bag, uh, into your cupcake cases. We do have, um, if you go on to Wilton on our website, we do have the bag, we do have the nozzle that you pop on your bag. It doesn't come with any bags, but it comes with a little nozzle. It's called a pouring thing or something. I can't remember what it's called. Let me just get this off. I'll put it in the wish list afterwards. I didn't think about it until just now, actually. Let's get this out of the way. That mix is all done. Clean. And then we'll just fill these up. Oh, chocolate chips. Let's put some of those in. Let's go get some. Yep, yeah, maybe the foil cupcake cases. We have uh, various foil cupcake cases available on our website. Got loads of cupcake cases. Just go to the shop bit and um, go to um, cake decoration part, I think. You find all the cupcake cases. So on our website, sugarandcrumbs.co.uk. Okay, don't forget we've got the sale on. Now, I added more stuff last night. I added chocolate drip to the sale. Faye Cahill's in there, FMM cutters, patchwork cutters, Karen Davies is all in there, okay? Um, sugar is in there as well. So let me just put these in. So we're gonna fill these two thirds full. And then we'll make up our buttercream and we'll make some uh, fairy cakes. Not fairy cakes, butterfly cakes. The old fashioned ones. They've gone out of fashion now, nobody makes them anymore, do they? But let me tell you now, make them with the grandkids, they'll love them. Or even your own children, but youngsters. You know when you're baking with the children, it's called uh, baking memories. What's the things that we all look back on when our childhood you know, all the things that, all the expensive things don't actually mean anything. It's all the things, that picnic in the park. I was talking to my son the other day, and I always remember as a little girl, my grandma used to, because I'm one of four, my grandma used to take us out in the garden, and she got one of these uh, plastic divider tray things, and in there she would chop up bananas, oranges, apples, and um, she'd put some, like, crisp in, um, some little... Um, little biscuit things in and then she put a big blanket on the on the on the grass and we'd all sit around and she'd say right we're having a party and you know what? I remember that I'm 58 and I still remember and I loved it it's one of the things I really love about her you know and it, you know those are things that it costs nothing and uh, I actually have some of those containers and I gave them to Wesley yesterday only yesterday I was telling him and he goes oh give me some and I'll do them with the kids in the garden because it's things like that. They remember my own children just remember caravan holidays going down to, on the, to the caravan. You know, they didn't have no money for anything. We had to go down to the caravan, do all our own shopping. There was no restaurants involved and um, couldn't afford it. You know, they all had to get outside and play, run around, hide and seek, climbing in the caravan windows when they shouldn't be, scaring the sisters. It's called making memories, isn't it? You know, they remember baking with me every Saturday morning. They all remember baking with me every Saturday morning. Following me Delia Smith cookery book. <laughs> so we're just gonna fill these two thirds full. So I've got loads of uh, batches left because I, I don't want to fill all of them off. Finish baking them all tonight. So before I go, I'll get all the rest of this lot in the oven. But we'll just get these in for now. You know, children are very easy to please. You know what they want? They just want time. And you know, today we don't really give them that, do we? We give them an iPad. And we're impressed that they can use it. But when they grow up, what memories will they have when they grow up? I was given an iPad to play with. Memories did we build with them? And baking is a great one to build with them. It's 
So let me just get rid of that and just clean. Right, so with the oil, you can see I've slopped it around a little bit on the uh, pan. A little bit more sloppy there. So I'll just go and get them in the oven. We'll see how the others are doing. Comments, John? people telling their memories what they what they were yeah it's nice isn't it Scra isn't it nice? scraping, scraping wallpaper yeah scraping wallpaper wasn't that fun <laughs> especially when you had to do the wood chip who remembers wood chip what a nightmare I remember when there was a little girl who was on, on my wall i'd be laying in bed at night time picking it all off and my mum would come in and go mad who's done that not me <laughs> So these are the ones with the oil. So they've done nicely, haven't they? Let me get this rack. So the, the, the rack here, can you see that, John? Uh, yeah. On that camera. So the rack, the legs fold, so you can either make them higher. It's always good to make them higher because it gives you more air to go around them. Okay, so I'm gonna sit them on there and let them cool down. I'm just gonna leave them in the tin. You'll notice I haven't slapped them down on the worktop. Don't do that. Okay, because that's what's going to knock the air out. All right, so I'm going to move those around there. And these are the ones made with oil. I'm not going to start faffing with them in the tin at the moment. I'm going to give them time to cool down. I don't want to be start picking them up. When they're in the tin, leave them there. Don't take them out and start throwing them on the worktop. They need that air to go around. Okay, the ones that I did earlier, I told you, I came in at half past six tonight. Ooh, nearly lost them then. The ones that came in earlier... So, I came in at half past six tonight to start baking, and these have been in the tin all night, so you don't need to take them out of the tin at all. Yeah, look, all stuck to the foils. Can you see this, John? Mm -hmm. All stuck to the foils. I've not taken these out of the tin whatsoever. Just leave them in the tin to cool down, okay? No need to take them out. So these are the ones made with oil. These are the ones made with margarine, yeah? Um, the ones with the oil, I think, rise better, or maybe I might put more, mix, more mixture in. Because the mixture is more, is more liquid, um, I think because it's more liquid, I've actually put more in than I have when it's been more solid like this. Yeah, pretty good. And the chocolate ones that we did before, made with butter, are here. You'll find one is missing because John's eating it. Okay, so they've been in the tin. Look, no peeling. No peeling. Lovely. We're one short. Did it taste nice, John? It was very nice, yes. Thank and you. these are chocolate lime, and we're going to make a um, banana, um, butter, banana split buttercream, and uh, they'll go perfect with the lime as well. Right, John, any questions? Uh, no, not at the moment. Lots of people with memories of stripping wallpaper. <laughs> I was talking to the girls in the hairdressers the other day and I was saying to them about the memories of a kid and um, like in my day there was no central heating so you know all your windows were frosted up who had the frosty windows and for some reason as a kid you used to put all your books on the windowsill so then you go and have them we put all your best books there have a look at them and then you come back months later and they're all soaking wet and moldy aren't they <laughs> all ruined fun of being a child many years ago these kids today don't know what they've got do they so just let me wash your hands a moment. Uh, a couple of people asking, can you cut some of them open to see the difference in texture yes. between the margarine right and the oil? Yeah. Do 
good idea. Right, oil. We got that on that camera, John? So let's peel. There we go. Nice and bouncy. You got it? Mm -hmm. I'm on this camera. No, you're not. You're on this one. Oh. Right. I hope I was working to this camera. That's fine. Well, you are now. Oh, so we're going to do this one. Should I cut it again then? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah? So, nice. Okay, so this is the oil ones. And they're nice and bouncy, look. And then these are the ones with margarine. And again, look, nice and bouncy. It's a personal choice, isn't it? What you like. Yeah. Do you want to do the taste test, John? May as well. Oil? No. No, that one's the oil. And that one's the butter, the margarine. Sure? I know what they are, of course I do. Can you believe he's testing me? Which, which camera are we on here? That one. Right, okay. Margarine. Oil. They'll all agree, they'll start telling you in a minute. Can you taste the banana through them? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, very nice. <laughs> could be good. Right, okay. What about that one then? Are you going to taste that one, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good. which one's this one? The margarine. That is softer. Yeah. I think so as well when I tasted it. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, let's make some buttercream. So um, I have to agree with John. I think the margarine ones are softer. Um, so maybe I might have done something wrong with the oil, but I do like the oil ones as well. But I think the oil ones raised, raised higher. So we've softened our butter. We're now going to put our flavored icing sugar in. I'm gonna put it in full strength. You can half and half. I started to tell you before, some of you use like a couple of tablespoons and add it to your plain icing sugar. Nothing wrong with that, but I don't really think it gives it the full strength. Um, it must be good. John's going back to eat those cakes, finish them off. He's not even a cake man. You enjoying them, John? Mm, yeah, very nice. So, how are you liking it having John in the kitchen? It's great, isn't it, now, having a man in the kitchen? Are you enjoying it, John? Overjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, so, I'm so glad I'm not watching Sky Sports on a Thursday night now. <laughs> Is that what you did on Thursday nights? <laughs> I have no idea what he does on Thursday nights when we're all in here. What do you do on Monday nights? Watch, Watch. Sky Sports. <laughs> yeah, do, do, do it most nights. <laughs> he does actually. I don't get a chance to watch the TV. Last year I was trying to save up for my... Um, I'm a, a bit of a Coronation Street fan. Just got a little bit of chocolate splash there. A um, bit of a Coronation Street fan. And, um, oh, don't do this, what I was just going to do there. That's through talking. Uh, make sure you chop it in. I was just going to turn it on. That would have been fun, wouldn't it? Was you waiting? <laughs> uh, make sure you chop your icing sugar in, okay? Uh, it's important you do that because if you don't, when you turn that mixer on, you might not have seen me for a little while, I know we've been covered in it. So we're just gonna chop it all in. I'm also, can you still eating that cake? Well done. I'm also just gonna add a spoonful of water, just to make it nice and soft. Did you use salted or unsalted butter? I, I use margarine. Oh, for the, for the buttercream? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, I use um, I use unsalted. It's entirely up to you uh, which one that you actually use. Um, some people prefer to use salted. Some people prefer to use unsalted. If you use salted, it takes the sweetness away. Because you've got to remember, it is icing sugar. Now, we do have a new product, uh, a new flavour called cream cheese. Um, who likes it, by the way? Have I still got it here? Actually have still got it here. So we have a new flavour called cream cheese. Now, all our flavours are natural flavours. This cream cheese is not real cream cheese. It's icing sugar and it's flavoured. 
I would suggest you use salted butter with this or slightly salted because it's meant to be a bit, it's not meant to be so sweet and it's ideal for your carrot cake and your red velvet cakes. Um, we've had excellent feedback. If any of you have used it, let everybody know what you think. But we've had great feedback. We've been working on a cream cheese flavour for a long time. One of the biggest issues we had was the smell. I've even bought liquid cream cheese just to see and oh my god I opened the bottle and nearly died and there was a lady here in the classroom um, just this week and I just said to her do you want this bottle of cream cheese and she went yeah all right then in fact I knew it was it was Danielle on Monday she said go on I'll use it but and her husband went oh. <laughs> but it does stink what does it smell like John what was it yeah. like when we were making it not very nice no so I know when uh, Laura and I was practicing with it last year and we've been working on it for a few years and Laura hadn't smelt it. So last summer she came in the kitchen and said, right, let's try another go at this cream cheese because we've tried loads of different variations and, she, and we were just dying. And then John came into the kitchen here and was like, Lord, what on earth are you doing? So I've added a little bit of butter, a little bit of water to this. Sorry about the noise. I'm right next to the microphone as well. <laughs> right, okay. Let's give it a mix. Now I like to beat it for a long time. So I like to beat the butter for a long time until it's white and fluffy. Then add the icing sugar, okay? And then beat the icing sugar for 30 seconds. I've actually just done a bit longer there. Um, if you beat it longer than 30 seconds, sometimes it can make it grainy. What I will say to you is, you'll never know when it's on a cake. Uh, when people come back and say it's grainy, what I will say to you is, is add a top of a little bit of um, hot water. So if you add hot water, that will help get rid of the grains away. But the other thing is, keep your finger out the bowl. Just put it on the cake, nobody will know. So there we go, there's our buttercream. So let's get our cupcakes. I'm going to show you how to do a rose swirl tonight. Let me clean my table here. So we've got 20 minutes. I'm going to do a rose swirl. Let's get my cupcakes. John, you can finish those cakes off if you wish. No, thanks. No. You don't really eat cake, do you? So some buttercream that I had earlier. So this is a white colour. And I just need to make this into a green. And I've got a lemon flavour there. Okay, the lemon colour. Now these were the buttercreams that I made last week. Okay. So I made these last week. So buttercream, can you put it back in the fridge? Yes. Okay. Make sure you cling film it and cling film it well, all right? Um, if you don't cling film it and you just put it in the fridge, it will crust over and it'd be no good to you. So make sure you cling film it. Then when you get it out of the fridge, leave it to go to room temperature. Leave it to go to room temperature and then... Um... Karen's just asked a question. Does that mixer have a light in the top? Yes, yes it, it does. does. Yeah, yep. it does. Uh, I'm just going to put these in the microwave for a few seconds just because they've gone firm again. Hold on. Right, just a couple of reminders while Carol's up over there. Our sale is currently on. Uh, there's over 600 lines in the sale with up to 50% off, so have a look and have a browse there. Also, in the sale, our icing sugars are now only £2 a bag. So all the icing sugars that are being used tonight, they are only £2 a bag. So again, don't miss out on that offer at the moment. A quick recap on the classes that are coming up. Uh, Carol's running a cupcake bouquet class on the 29th of January. 
the 19th of February and the 11th of March and they're based here in Stockport, South Manchester. Uh, we have Amy Archibald in doing a wedding cake class which is a two day course on the 1st of February. We have Michael Lewis Anderson doing a royal icing class on the 22nd of February and we have Emily Coyle here on the 1st of March. Um, and that's, I think, that's a one day class, but it's quite a long day. Yeah, it's a 12 hour day. Uh, and then one we hadn't mentioned before, we've got Georgie Godball back in the class, in the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen, and she's doing three days in a row. Yes. Uh, three different classes, the 27th, the 28th, and the 29th of March. Quite a lot of you have booked on all three days, which is fantastic. So, I'm just gonna give you some work to do, John. I'm going to use the pistachio green tonight. These are on offer, £1.45. Just the pistachio green and pink. We've got an offer. I over ordered. Right, John, any chance you can mix that for me, please? There you yeah, go. Thank you. I'll get another palette knife. Right, piping bags. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a rose swirl. Um, I'm using these big pink bags, okay, mainly because I run out of the clear bags and uh, I usually use the Queen of Hearts or the Simply Making ones. Um, I forgot to ask John to bring some home tonight. So I've had to use these really big ones. These big ones are perfect for meringues or if you're doing you know, the same type of um, decorating with buttercream and you can tie the bag at the top and just keep doing your swirls. Um, but I've had to cut these down. So I've had to cut this much off. So don't buy big bags when you want small bags. Buy small bags, it's well worth it. So what we're gonna do is, we are going to teetone our bag and we'll do some uh, rose swirls first and then we'll do some butterfly cakes. So I've got this lovely, bright yellow colour. Can you see that, John? Yes. So I've just put it in the microwave. Now, it is a bit soft. I've probably put it in for a little bit too long, but because I'm gonna put this white in, it won't really matter. So you'll see that I am putting the yellow in. Now, I wouldn't be able to pipe with this on its own. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Now I wouldn't be able to pipe with this on its own because it's it's just a little bit too soft. I'd have to let it firm up again in the fridge. But the white that I've used is still firm. So by the time we put this in, it'll balance it out and make it even. So we'll just put that in. So you put the white in the middle. And see how lovely and white my buttercream is? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's all because I whip the living daylights out of the butter first. Don't whip the living daylights out of butter and icing sugar. Just the butter first. Whip all the yellow out. And when I'm using butter, I only use value butter. Don't be using your expensive stuff. You don't need to. Okay? And you don't need to simply because the flavoured icing sugars are going to do all the hard work. Now, for you guys who are in America, um, John will shout out again where you can buy our product in America. Um, we do want more stores in America. We do want more stores in America. Now, we can't contact all the stores there because we don't know them. But if you've got your large store, cake store, and you want them to stock our products, why don't you email into them and say, have you thought about stocking sugar and crumbs? And then let, let them come to us, it'd be great. Um, that's all we can ask you to do. Right, okay, so rose swirl. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on the top of the cupcake. Can you see under this camera, John? So we're just going to start in the middle. I'm gonna go round, round, and down, yeah? So I'll do a few of these for you. So this is a bigger one. So you can see, look, how these are all stuck, baked well. So round, down the middle, 
round, round. Keep it nice and tight and down. Let's do another one. Round, round, round. We'll just pop those back in there. John has made me some um, green. So I'll just pop some green in the piping bag. So it looks like quite a lot of you are going to come and see us on our road trip in February. Quite excited about meeting you all. I'll get John to shout out the dates again. And if the dates get full, email Crafters Companion. Tell them that you've missed getting in. And let's see if we can get a second class on. They are open to a second class. It's not that we're forcing them around. They're open to it. But we want to fill one class at a time. Yeah, so the dates, we're going up to do a Facebook Live with them on the 6th of February, which is a can Thursday. The camera, yeah. Um, and then the following day, we will be doing a cupcake uh, bouquet demo at the Newton A Cliff store. So that's the 7th of February at 10 a.m. The next day, the 8th of February, we will be in Chesterfield. Um, and the following Saturday, which is Saturday the 15th of February, we will be in Evesham. So hopefully with us moving around the country, it gives you guys who are not that close to us here in Stockport an opportunity to come along and say hello. Yeah, it'd be great. Right, okay, so that's those. And then let's just do some butterfly cakes. Let's just do these. We're not going to decorate them all. What time did my cupcakes go in the oven? Can no anyone idea. remember? No idea. You don't remember, John? No, I don't think you said. So I don't say. Did anybody pay attention? I was just going to have a look. Now, some people say that when you can hear the noise stop, the little whistling noise stop, that they're ready. Um, I can't work like that because I'm actually hard of hearing, believe it or not. Um, I can only hear low tones and I suffer very badly with tinnitus in both ears. So as much as you see me here every week, I've got constant screaming in this ear and a mild scream in this one. And this one is just all day. It sleeps with me, everything. It's just constantly screaming. So I couldn't listen to any little noise. But I know some of you swear blind that you pop your ear in the oven, pop to the cake, try, to, try not to burn your ear. <laughs> And if you hear the whistling sound stop, they're ready. But I can't tell you that, okay? Because um, I, can't, I can't use that method. So I just have to go by times. What nozzle are you using? I use the 1M Wilton. Right, these are ready. And there you go. They're ready. And that's the oil ones. Yeah. Now, these are a little bit more, you'll see that they, they might look a little bit wet, but they're not. It's just where the, the chocolate drops. I put chocolate drops in these and they smell delicious. And um, personally, because I put chocolate drops in, I probably wouldn't put anything else on these at all. So we're going to let these cool. And then before we finish, I'll cut them open. Yeah. These are the ones I did earlier, John. These are the ones that I did earlier. And these are with the margarine. So we'll cut them open afterwards. They're without chocolate drops. Right, okay. So, I'm going to put my knife here. Not knife. these cut open so all we're going to do round you can all remember this you must all remember these don't you okay who did butterfly cakes all right and you have to remember to keep the right one i remember my grandma saying just remember keep the right one the right top to the right cupcake so Emma, can you see these okay john we can yeah yeah it's just going to dig in Hope you've enjoyed tonight's live, making basic cupcakes. Give them all a go. Look, you can see how lovely they are. And then we're gonna put a little bit of jam in. Got a bit of jam in, haven't you? Bit of 
jam in. Some of you can go mad and have lots of jam in. But jam. Jam, there we go. And then we need some buttercream. So I need another spoon. This is great for anybody who can't pipe. So I'm just going to put the buttercream in on top like that. Just a nice blob. Just a nice blob. You don't have to pipe it in for butterfly cakes. Just push it in. Do you all remember doing these? Did they remember John when they before when we said mm -hmm. they remember the butterfly yeah. cakes? You need to bring these back in fashion, retro. These are the things that I'm telling you now, do them with your grandchildren now or your own children. Believe me, you'll have to wait 20 years, but they'll come back and go, Grandma, can we make butterfly cakes? Nana. So here we go. Right. Remember what I said? Keep them there in her. We're just going to pop them on. And in half. Make sure you've got the right top for the right cake. So the demos with Crafters Companion are going well, just checked, and we have, we've got 12 people booked on the Newton Acliffe demo. Yeah. We've got eight booked on for the Chesterfield demo, and we've got seven booked on for Evesham. So that's not bad, given the fact that they've only been live for a few hours. Yeah, brilliant, isn't it? Because when did you set it live? Just this afternoon, wasn't it? Yeah, it was this afternoon. Yeah. Right, okay, so. Let me just get that out of the way. Let's put these in here. What do we think, fairy cakes? Let's go and get the chocolate cakes and I think we're all done. We're done, we're done, we're done. Let's turn that off. Just so these cool enough. Ooh, they're not quite cool enough yet. And just a little bit of information about Crafters Companion who we're working with that if people don't know, uh, the Facebook Live that we're doing on the Thursday the 6th of February, that will be Carol and Sarah Davies, who yeah. was the, the founder of Crafters Companion. They'll be doing their Facebook Live together on February the 6th. And, and, just for so those, say, and for those of you who don't know who Sarah is, she is the newest dragon on Dragon's Den. And she's a great lady. I really like her. Do you know what she is? She's the younger version of me. So I, that, she's probably a bit cleverer than me. <laughs> but she's a fabulous lady, lady, very down to earth, very friendly, very warm. If you're into your crafting and you like making gift cards and stuff like that, you want to go and join Crafters Companion. Um, they do some great lives. Um, they, don't, they don't do any cake decorating. We're the first people to go with them and do some decorating. And it was really funny. They got in touch with us May last year. And then we've been up to see them a couple of times and had a chat, uh, chat with them. And we were going to do this before Christmas and then things all got changed and we had to move it. Um, so we're really looking forward to going up with them in February. It's a new thing for them, for the cake decorating side. Um, we are going live in their studio on the 6th of February. They've got a fantastic studio up there. I think they've got three studios. There was two when we was there and they were building one, weren't they? Yeah. So they've got three studios. We'll be in one of those. And as John said, we're actually doing that demo with Sarah herself. And I'm sure you're going to love her. If you don't know her already, go and Google her. Have a look at her. Go, in, go and do some catch up of Dragon's Den and see her on there because she is fabulous. It'll be hot in the kitchen that day, two dragons. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> okay. And then we're then going to, um, that's at their main head office store. And then the following morning, we're actually in their shop, in their kitchen, their demonstration kitchen. That's where we'll be doing our morning demo at 10 a.m. If we can fill that, we'll then do an afternoon demo. And then after that, John and I are in the car. Now, I'm not quite sure whether we're going to come home or whether we're going to go straight to Chesterfield and stay the night there. We're going to go home, are we? It's not far to Chesterfield from here. I know, but it means we're, what time are we on in Chesterfield? 10 o'clock. Oh, well, it's an early start, isn't it? We might be staying in Chesterfield if I have my way. So um, then we're over to Chesterfield and then same again, if it gets full, we'll do two sessions or otherwise run our way home, get the Sunday off. But the following Saturday, we're down in Worcester, um, which will be great to meet some of you people down that way. We're at Evesham. Evesham, near yeah, Worcester. How far away from Birmingham is that? I don't know, it looks like probably half an hour south of Birmingham. Yeah. So 
for people Birmingham way and um, I would probably think that people Northwich and it's not going to be too far from not Northwich not Northwich um, uh, not Northwich what's it begins Norwich is it it's over that side, isn't it? No. No? Oh, well, well wherever it is. Away. Oh, is it? All right, right. don't worry. Jog geography lesson coming up after this, uh, this live. Yeah, okay then. So, <laughs> chocolate cupcakes. So, what we've done here, these are the chocolate cupcakes. Now, these were made with oil, and I've put chocolate drops in these. These were made without oil, okay, and there's no chocolate drops. So, let's get one out. Again, they're all firm, they all firm. I've cooled them exactly the same way in the, in the, in the um, pan. Okay, they've not come out of the pan. They've just gone on a baking rack. These are still hot. So uh, this is cooled down, but it is still hot. It's cool enough for me to pick up now, but it's still warm. So let's chop these in half. So this is the one made with oil and chocolate drops. And these are our chocolate lime. Yeah, aren't they lovely? Are you on this camera, John? I'm fiddling around with, or have you missed it all? Mm. What were they watching? I'm not sure. Which camera was you on? Probably this one. <laughs> Love having John in the kitchen. So, I'll start again. So this is the um, chocolate cake made with oil and chocolate drops. You'll see this is on it, it's because I've got chocolate drops in it. Okay, it's just where it's melted. It's open nicely, it was a seal, firm. There you go, look, nice and soft. We'll cut it open. And look, see the chocolate chips in there, yeah? And then this one that was without chocolate chips, these are the ones I made earlier. And these, again, look nice and soft. Cut them in half. These are without chocolate chips. And they're nice and soft as well. So, entirely up to you. Shall I have a bite? Do you want to have a bite? You don't want to have a bite? No, thank you. Are you fed up the cake now? Yeah. <laughs> and both, cool. Each is about 45 minutes from Birmingham. Right, okay. So I think we're done. What time is it? Crikey, on time. Can you believe it? No. <laughs> Just let me get rid of this. So John doesn't want any more chocolate cake. I would say he's gone through a fair bit of cake tonight behind the scenes. So I'm not sure whether any of you heard. He's definitely gone through some cans of pop as well. I hope you enjoyed tonight's live. Back to basics. Sorry, I really shouldn't have put food in my mouth. Let me get rid of it. So I hope you've enjoyed what we've covered tonight. Let me know what you think. It's always great to see feedback. And I forgot to say hello YouTubers. John was so bad, we really do forget. Have you been watching what's been going on on YouTube? Who's been no. with us? No. Sorry YouTubers, I am so bad. Um, I always forget because I'm always looking at this camera. I know this one is connected to Facebook and then it links onto YouTube. So um, thank you for joining us. Let me know what you think of this live. Um, I'm going to go and go and top up and put all the things on the uh, website that I hadn't used before, uh, that haven't gone into the uh, Facebook's must-haves. So I'll put in the cupcake cases that I've used tonight in there. I'll put in the two nozzles um, that we haven't used, uh, that we've used, and um, I don't know, anything else that I can think of. Otherwise, we're going to see you on Monday night at 8 o'clock with um, Emily Coyle. She'll be here with her Swiss Meringue buttercream, and I'm not sure what she's going to make, but it will be amazing. Whatever she does will always be amazing. So make sure you're back with us on Monday to join us at eight o'clock. And thank you for joining John and I in the kitchen tonight, and go and enjoy all the lovely goodies in the sale. Is that us over and done, John? And don't forget to oh, I haven't done the like and share. Like it. Thursday's like and share. Wait, don't go anywhere yet. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So last Thursday when John was in the kitchen, um, let me just go down, let me find it. So last Thursday's live, so we need to find the winner. This is when John and I were in the kitchen last week. I can't remember what we were making last week. So bad, what was we making last week? There we were, live, that's Danielle's. John, what were we doing last week? Can you remember? You were airbrushing. Oh yeah, that's it, yeah. Those nice things So, Right, was that our live? Back to basic from bus basics buttercream, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Right, so we had 84 shares. Can you see on this camera? No. You're not seeing? No. Right, okay. We had 84 shares. Let me look at the shares. 
So 84 shares, let's get them all lined up. So I have to do this for a bit just to get them all released. Just one second. So I'll just keep pulling up the pages. Because what happens is they doesn't they don't all come up at first. I have to keep bouncing them. You see there's lots of them. There's 84 people there. Are you on this camera, John? Mm -hmm. Do you want to stick your finger on one of them, John? So I spin it. You just meant to do it while we're going. Who did you get then? Doreen. Yeah. Doreen Wallage, they are. So Doreen Wallage is the winner of our £25 voucher. And I had to laugh because there's Jules Brownell, one of our admins. Sorry, Jules, you just missed it. And there's Sarah Webster, either side, Lindsay Pearson. Anyhow, it's all fair. It's all about when we stick our finger on it. And Doreen Wallage, Wallage? Yep. Yeah. Haulage is the winner of our £25 voucher. Doreen, all you need to do is go to our website, sugarandcrumbs.co.uk, go to info, send a message that you're the winner of the live uh, for a £25 voucher, and we will email you over a code to use. Yeah, brilliant. So that's us over and done with. I am going to say goodbye because I need to finish off making these cakes for the night and cleaning up in the kitchen, so I reckon I'll be here till midnight. See you on Monday. Right, bye, bye. everyone.